hello everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel this is tina and what a wonderful day to be creating with you i am really excited to finally share my layout for today i have recently been traveling and um george that's my husband and i went on a um, almost three week vacation to celebrate our 30th anniversary so i have all of these amazing projects that i have coming up to share with you for the collections that close to my heart is currently featuring in our um current catalog um I I am just so excited. This one is Cosette and it actually has a, it has a vintage vibe to it, but it also has lots of Parisian notes. So I, you're going to see this coming up because we did in fact go to France. Um, uh, we did two stops in France and I'm really looking forward to using this collection with that. But I just want to show you the stickers are amazing and I've already done some cutting for today's project, but I have some more featured here because I've bought multiple packs. So you might say, well, you know, later on, well, how do you still have that? I bought um, a couple of packs of this knowing I was going to use some for my vintage, um, my heritage, and some for um, that upcoming vacation that I knew I was going on. So these are just really beautiful. I love the idea of cutting this apart in particular and making little individual embellishments. Um, all of our paper is always two-sided and we have that beautiful borders that are across the top. We call them zip strips. Um, and I love everything about this. But you can see here the Paris. There's the French in writing and lots of Paris actually. You'll see the word Paris. Um, the mulberry stripe with that pine and um, the last two, this one here. And I love this. Now I'm bringing in some, I'm going to tell you one thing that is my secret weapon I'm calling with this. I love to look for current things in my stash to pair with um, anything that I'm that I'm working on. And I love that on this uh, scrapbooking journey here on my YouTube page that I'm going to be able to share all of these ideas and tips with you. But I had my leftover hope and kindness. Now, at the time that I prepared this kit, the card stock was still available and it is May 2023. So um, the card stock, the hope and kindness card stock is what I love paired with the Cosette. So if you guys happen to have some of that, if not, it is still available, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our project and we are going to put this together. The first thing I'm going to share with you is a little bit about photos, right? So I am working with what I thought was more photos than I had. And let me show you why. Now, I do not come from um, a rich family. So photos are definitely something that are more precious to me. But because my family never really did anything with our photos, we have a lot less of them. If you're just using, you know, getting the photos and people are looking at them and then they're going into a box and a package, they have a lot less value. And that is an issue that I face um, with being a lover of scrapbooking. So the other thing is, is my photos are scattered to the winds. My aunt has some, my mom has some, some have vanished, some are coming over and, we, and I don't know what they are. But the one thing that I decided to do was to stop waiting until I got everything. Everything is not going to happen for me. I'm going to create pages and if I can add to my book later on or if I have something that is so significant, I can use flip flaps, I can use creative ways, pockets, and different things to add to them. I want to get my scrapbooking done now. Okay, so for these photos here, when I first sorted them, this is actually probably my mother's first photo session. This is my grandmother and this is my mom. And these pictures are taken on a naval base in North Carolina. My grandfather was stationed out of North Carolina um, at a Naval Air Force Base. He was in the Navy during um, 1945 at the end of World War II. And um, so this is where my mother was born. And this is their actual, the front of their military housing that he had. And that is why my mother was born in North Carolina. Um, after my grandfather was um, discharged, they moved back um, to Delaware, which is where we're from. But you'll notice here, these are all the same picture. So I thought I had lots of pictures. But in fact, what they did was it looks like they opted to have the pictures printed in these different ways. So some have like this crinkly cut line and then there's like these or crinkly cut around the corners and then there's a line and then some look like this. And it all depended, but I noticed that they were the same photo. So my plan was to just take the clearest ones that I could 
which, and these are my grandfather. This is all I have, but he is in his naval uniform. And that is a very rare and special thing um, to have. I have very little of that. So I will probably put one of these aside because I've been collecting a few to do a um, Navy layout now that I have his ship in the base and all of that on um, and doing my research. Um, but one of the things that I've done is I have scanned these photos and added them to my family heritage um, photo files. And they have been placed in my grandparents file, which I have them filed together um, in one file. And then it's also saved into my mother's file so that I can find them in two places. Um, it gets really messy. And for me, it's just easier to save them twice. All right. So, um, in deciding what they are, this one here crying, right? So I went ahead, look crying. If we look at these two, it's obvious that this was the same photo. Now, anytime I can, I do like to scrapbook the old original heritage photos. I find that I like those better on the page, but I will um, scan and print copies of whatever I need whenever I can. I love this one. I, I'm wondering if the, um, the little sweater here that my mom is wearing may have been knitted by my great grandmother. Um, all the girls in the family had them. So I liked that as well. And I, so I chose these two for my layout. And then I really liked this one. Um, where my grandfather is kind of holding her up. Oh, sorry if I held that off. All right. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to put these aside. But I might pull this this one. I might pull this one into the layout as well because I like the coloring better on it. All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll put these. I've And I've put that. And let's bring in our cuts. All right. I have made this using the SVG file from the Cosette collection. And all I did was um, choose the papers that I wanted with it. I made a few adjustments and I have it laid out and we're gonna go ahead and put this together. I'm gonna be doing some background stamping and some inking um, with this um, as well. So I'm gonna flip my Versamat over and I'm gonna grab shortbread. And I know that might seem like an odd color, but trust me, it's all gonna come together in the end. All right. All right, I'm gonna bring in a piece of, I call this throwaway paper. It is um, just really thin paper that I use um, to protect my, um, my Versamet. All right, now I have some things um, that I'm going to be working with and uh, I'll kind of talk about those as I um, share them. One of the things is background stamping. I love background stamping. I'm gonna be working with this Parisian Notes that was um, available on our Stamptacular sale. However, if you find that um, you're looking for background stamps, this leafy background and sentiments, this is available now, and this is gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. You'll see me using it. I grabbed some textured stamp, but if you like one that is um, more the size, this is Academia Rose, and if you look at the size, and currently available, and if you look at the size, I used this a lot. I've used it so much, you can't even see it, so I stamped one off full time. <laughs> looks like this uh, but that's been cut down and it, it will work it has you know lots of nice um, notes to it there but um, it is you know similar in size to the Parisian notes and um, I know lots of my gang worked with this as we made some beautiful cards and here's kind of an example of one of those here we go all right so I'm gonna be taking the Parisian notes and just doing some background. One of the things that I grabbed uh, when I got the Cosette collection was the Picture My Life cards. They are really gorgeous. Um, they were still available. And um, they you will see me using those in some upcoming projects as well. But you're going to see me bring in several um, different elements that I'm using with this uh, particular layout. All right, I have my shortbread ink here and my Parisian notes. And what I want to do is just provide some background stamping. Now I cut this, I cut this layout just as it was featured. The only thing I chose in the SVG file, the only thing I chose to do was um, change my papers to be the papers that I want them to be. And I did a little something with a contour that I will share. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that shortbread. There it is. And these are the white mats that are included. And this uh, layout has two stories. The first story is the one that I'm scrapbooking. 
<clears throat> which is about my mother. And the second one is after I got back from my vacation, I dumped a 30 ounce cup of water all over my cut demo table for, for all of my upcoming projects. So um, this was the first one that I pulled off and I was able to save some of it. Um, and then I did a recut. Oh, I don't know why I put that aside. I still have, these are gonna be my journaling strips. And I am planning on adding them after with some detail, but I wanna go ahead and get my, my uh, background stamping done now with them. Okay. And I don't want this to pick up perfection. So you can see that what I'm doing here is kind of just multiple stamping on it and just allowing some of that shortbread to pick up. And just because I have it, there we go. All right, and I'll set those aside. And when I do my journaling on them, I will use a very dark ink. So this will pick up nicely. All right, and now while I have my shortbread ink um, out, I'm going to grab my flowers. Now I've already done um, my stamping and my coloring, but what I wanna do is just kind of hit them with a little bit of that shortbread. And I'm dabbing into my ink and stamping off on that, uh, what I call throwaway paper because I wanna add very little color. These are done with White Daisy and French Vanilla on my cuts, and I, I often blend them. Actually, if you saw my house, you would understand I blend them colors a lot more. And I'm just getting a little bit of that kind of vintage feel without doing full inking on these. And I really love the shortbread for this. Um, I think we often tend to go to browns. Um, and uh, this provides such a nice color. Perfect. Just kind of very random. All right, all the pieces that I just inked, these stamp and thin cuts, they all come from the Cosette card making stamp set. It is gorgeous. You can see how thick my pack is. It's because I have gotten many of them ready to go for me to grab and use in my projects. And as I said, this was the SVG. This 12 by 12 background piece is from Hope and Kindness. Now, my original one I chose was the pine, um, but it got soaking wet um, when I had my water spill. So therefore, I grabbed the harbor. I loved the way it looked. I think these colors blend beautifully. Um, and you'll see that as this comes together. All right, for my pictures, I really want to leave as much possible intact, but we do have to work with them. So I'm just gonna grab my cutter. And I'm going to even out this edge that is on this side right here. I never count on the photo being um, cut square on my older photos. So I really like to use my guide and kind of line it up and see if I can just take off like a straight amount. It just works better for me. I just find that it's easier. And um, I, I, I don't know. They're just, they're never cut. Um perfectly square. They're older. You know, you can see here that gap is bigger here than it is at the top. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Whereas I can kind of turn my photo and I can even that out a little bit by just kind of looking at it myself. So that's just a quick tip. I'm going to keep these as they are right now, knowing that I have to cut this one down for sure. I'm going to just kind of cut about an eighth of an inch off of this one because this one is a little bigger all the way around. And working with your old photos can be um, as wonderful as it is frustrating at times. I am really looking to reconnect with all of my scrapbooking and share that journey with all of you. Okay. Let's go ahead and start. Um, I always say let's play decrease the pieces. Decreasing my pieces, and I've done some pre-work, makes me super happy. This is from the Hope and Kindness collection as well, and I'm going to be using that as a base. Now, I do have a picture of this, so let's not get nervous standing by. So I'm just going to 
very calmly put my pieces in a nice pile and then bring those in. Now I might have um, a little bit of warping on some of these papers, but I checked each one of them and decided which ones I thought were acceptable. And I did recuts on the others. All right, here we go. And I can see that a little bit, but I'm a-okay. And I have two of these um, triangle pieces cut. And I'm just rotating it because I work better side to side than up and down. So you always got to go with what you're most comfortable with. Okay, it's all gonna come together so quickly. Okay, I've actually already um, lined up my flowers as well on top of each other and curled them with my bone folder. So as I bring those in, you'll see that they're already done. Two of those flowers get combined to make each one. All right, this is the scallop cut from the SVG. I love that detail. And what I'm going to do now is um, bring in some of my shortbread ink. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the shortbread um, to where I know it's going to peek out. It is a lighter color, so it's also more forgiving. I'm going to do that in the upper corner here and then down here. Now, this is a one-page layout. So what I've done is I've made some notes that um, I can use these papers uh, to match and coordinate on the other one. So as my scrapbooking grows, my albums will grow, I'll be able to refer back to um, some notes that I've taken um, to have. Okay, let's talk about this beauty, still available. Um, this is the Hope and Kindness collection again, and this is the doilies. I absolutely, these two here, are what come in the kit. I love them in the thin cut set. I love them. And if you are doing any type of heritage or vintage or anything, it is such, this one here is such a beautiful size. And I just think that it's just gorgeous and it, it comes out every time just so perfectly. So you're going to see me using that a lot. All right, I'm gonna bring in, this is actually the background um, to the die cuts. So you punch all your die cuts out and I have some Cosette stuff here in one of um, my photo holders. And these are things that I knew that I might incorporate into my layout. And one of the things that I did is I punched out all of the, um, the die cuts and I put them in a little cellophane bag and I just marked them as Cosette so I know what collection it goes with. But right here, I may see it or I may not. I decided that I um, really wanted to add just a little something. This makes a great stencil when um, after you get all those die cuts out. And it's just more value for something that you're going to buy because those die cuts are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just going to use some masking tape. I'm going to use a little toffee ink and you can see that I have some darker ink that is around the outside of this and um, when I did my inking for this I used mocha um, to add some dimension um, to this as well. And I'm looking for just a nice light um, butterfly to be on that area and there it is. All right, we'll just get this centered up. All right. I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive to keep that down for me while I continue to work from the one side to the other now. Here we go. 
And I have um, lots of embellishments. This leaf here in particular is one of my favorites and I will bring it in all the time. I call it my craft arsenal. Um, and that's just a cut that I've had for a really long time. I wanna go ahead and get my two photos of my grandmother with my mother um, cut so that I can see how I'm going to be able to work with these. I know that I'm going to cut my photos down but I really want to look at how they're going to lay out. Now, I'm never afraid to cut my photos. I am very comfortable with cropping. And um, as I'm looking at this, I really want to take these all the way down. Oh, I want to swap this off. Here we go. I only removed my page and I meant to remove the whole thing. Okay. So now that I can look at these photos, I want to go ahead and cut those down. And this may be the only pictures that exist of this military housing um, for my family. Oh, they uh, they came out so good. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and I want to seal this down, but I am not going to um, put anything on the outer portion. I really don't need to. Now this is added, so this was not in the Cricut file. And I know that I'm gonna want this down lower because of where my pictures are gonna lay and off to the left a little bit. There we go. I need to amp up my scrapbooking for multiple reasons, but um, one of the reasons are so that I can get these into the hands of my mother and my aunt so that they can have them and use them. Now I'm only putting a little bit of adhesive in case I wanna tuck. I love to um, tuck things, uh, paper, stickers, anything like that behind my photos and add to them. So I wanna be able to still have the opportunities to do that. Um, actually wanna flip these photos. I try not to rub my adhesive too hard. Now I'm switching these because of where the tabs are located and I could have just pulled off the white and flipped them, but I like this side of the paper and not this side. So there we go. <laughs> All right. That way I have that bigger picture at the top. Okay. Yes, I like that much better. Okay. Sure, bring those two back together. One of the things I did with the SVG file is I went in and I contoured this image and I took all of the um, the holes out so that I could make a um, an, this underlay here. And you can simply do that in the contour feature. For those of you who are in my um, Facebook group, that lesson, the contour feature, you can find in the Design Space um, Lessons album on the Facebook page. There we go. You can really see how everything's coming together. Now I have a couple of stickers and I've just taken the sticky off the back using my anti-static pouch. And I have a few of those ready. This here is a perfect example of that warping that I had. The water was real. It was very scary. It was just one of those moments. Okay, I can see that I'm having a little bit of lifting. I'm not gonna worry about this too much because I put everything in a page protector. And just the weight of um, the other pages are really going to help me um, have everything down. I do wanna use enough adhesive though to keep everything intact, but I don't worry about small lifts and stuff like that because it works itself out. I'm gonna add these side stripes. And this SVG file, so many uses, but you know, it's one of those things they've given us this complete layout, which is amazing. But also each one of these are individual images. So you can use this triangle that's in the back again and again, and the scalloped square is so beautiful. This border, I could use that 10 times over again and again and again. I'm gonna grab some glue dots. And I'm just going to secure this with a glue dot. As I mentioned before, I don't worry about having all of my stuff perfectly down. Glue dots are super sticky, right? And I'm just gonna tuck this right behind here. And I wanna bring in a title for this. So I have a piece of white daisy here. And I found this stamp set 
which by the way, is also still available. And there's this perfect stamp that says beginnings right here. That is gonna make a wonderful title since I believe this is my mother's first photo shoot. I'm gonna grab some Harbor ink. I'm choosing to use Harbor. It matches the color that is on the background right here. Um, you know, if you decide to go with the pine sheet that I mentioned earlier, you could swap that out for pine, but I want a nice dark one. Changing my mind and thinking I would like the shortbread background stamp on this as well. Just going to grab that and work that in really quickly. Now, I don't want the flower portion to be super pronounced on that. All right, I'm going to let that sit for a second, but we're going to go ahead and keep working. Let's talk about these flowers. So what I did was I took all my flowers and I overlaid them with glue dots. And um, I have the one dark and one light, the light on the bottom, the dark on the top. And then I just simply curled them a little bit, cupping them with my um, bone folder. All right, in my bits file... I took all of the dots that were um, on the design space file um, for this and I covered them with the rose gold liquid pearls and you can see how pretty they are. And then I ran them through my Xyron. So while this um, is setting for a few seconds here, for a few minutes, I can go ahead and grab all those dots and put them in the center of my flowers. And I think they really add something. I'm gonna be bringing in the rose gold again. Okay, those are all set. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to do my beginning stamp. Uh, this stamp set was, uh, the Stampin' Thing Cut set with the beginnings was also still available. I have now pulled that out and put it back in with um, stamps that I'm going to use. This was part of um, a prior, oh, I love it. This was part of a prior um, stamp set that I had that I had worked with, but I hadn't worked a ton with it. And the reason why I'm bringing it back is um, it's springtime and I'll be working with a lot of flowers, but you can see here this underused gorgeous magnolia that I need to spend lots of time with. This one right up here. And I really like the side view on this butterfly. So, you know, I love having my stamps to go back to again and again and again. Okay, we'll get all our leaves out. And if you wanted to add some more dimension, you could ink your leaves as well. I'm gonna go ahead and mat my title. I think I actually wanna ink it. Now that I am seeing it, I'm gonna bring in some toffee, which is the um, background color that I have, and I'm going to do some inking with the toffee. Um, the doily is cut out of this, as well as those little side borders. And I think I'm gonna want it a little darker. I had mentioned um, the inking on these, and I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift those and add some inking. You could always just rub them with ink on your layout as well. Okay, using some glue dots, I am going to start tucking the leaves um, behind my photos. I am using all of the um, thin cuts that are here. I have colored those with our markers and um, they are ready to go. I'm gonna do the same thing, just a simple glue dot. And kind of start bringing those in. I will tell you guys, spending five days in the English countryside, um, when you have allergies, that is daring. <laughs> that is daring. It was well worth it. It was definitely well worth it. I still have these photos. 
And I really like the beginnings here, and this will enable me to add my journaling strips that are gonna be at the bottom. And I do not tend to use foam tape on my vintage layouts nearly as much as I use it in you know my other projects, which may kind of surprise some of you who have been with me for a while. All right, I'm gonna let this come all the way out and I'm overlapping it. And right underneath here, I'll be able to do some journaling. I'm going to grab one of the water markings off of the sticker sheet and I'm gonna tuck that behind this. I almost find that by lifting and tucking and um, doing all of these fun things that I end up liking my stuff so much more. So I'm gonna let those sit there while I add flowers. Now I am going to do a little bit of foam tape um, on these uh, flowers uh, so that they kind of keep the cupping. I'll just put a foam dot on them. Yes, this is really coming together nicely. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of um, foam tape to this as well, just because of where I am positioning it on the layout. I'm gonna bring in my little, the bits case that I have going on here. And I have all kinds of things in here um, to use. I'm gonna go for those Cosette die cuts. I also have some additional leaves that were cut out of the Hope and Kindness. And I can see now that I could use a couple of those to fill in some areas. And then I have these keys that um, I got quite a while ago and I really love them. <clears throat> they have a wonderful vintage vibe. And I have some of our mink twine. I think that's a really nice spot for that as well. I wanna be able to see my die cuts, so I'm just going to dump those out. It's easier to use for me when I get to kind of look at them. And I have so many of these left that um, I, you know, want to be able to see through them. Okay, I think I'm at a point where I am ready to add um, just kind of the extra stuff. And then I want to put my photos down. I'm just gonna start playing and lining some stuff up to see if I would like where it's gonna go. I really like this picture exactly like it is. It's been sitting there, it's grown on me. And by the way, if you look here, this is where I got my information from. It was written on the back of this picture that these were taken August 26, 1945. My mother was born July 11th, 1945. So that's how I was able to kind of put together. And I've written that information down in my notes along with the name of the Naval Base. Um, the town that this naval base was in, it no longer exists. Um, and um, I have those, uh, I have those details to add with my journaling. Kind of want to tuck that, but I don't want it hidden. And this one here, I would like to um, give it a little bit more attention and bring it to the front. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to mat it. All right, I've decided to mat this with um, a little bit of harbor. Okay, now that I have that uh, picture in that boulder, I can still see that little butterfly through there. And I think I wanna put my picture here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some strips to lay out so that I make sure that I leave room for my journaling. These are um, 3 eighths of an inch. I 
I think I would like those there to tell the story. And then I want to tuck this a little bit as well. I decided I want both of my photos to kind of be on the outside a little bit there. And then that way I have leaves touching both of them and I like that. And I know that I'll be able to comfortably fit my journaling there as well. I am feeling really good about this and um, I just want to bring in a little bit more. Put this one here first. I kind of liked this. There we go. And I have a couple of little hearts. I'm just going to add a little bit of toffee ink to those two hearts. Now right down here in my file, I added a little piece and I will be putting the year. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Okay, it seems my voice is going to stop cooperating, but that is nothing new. All right, there is this other postage. I did this postage one here, and since I brought a couple of these in, I figured grab that. Get a little play on that. We are just about done. I'm going to put the postage down. And then I'm going to use a glue dot to secure that little key. There we go. Oh, I think it turned out really good. Let's go ahead and grab those liquid pearls. <clears throat> okay, to add some of these liquid pearls, I am actually going to make them very, very small. I do not want them to be too big. I'm going to lift this and rub that adhesive off. So I can turn this. I'm just going to give this a little tap. After I put the pearls on, I find it helps to flatten them out. I am doing my pearls in clusters of threes on this layout. And I think that is gonna do it. I'm really happy with how the layout has turned out. I think it has all of the notes that I really wanted to hit with this one. Um, this Cosette collection is just really beautiful to work with and it's going to lend itself to so much of my current scrapbooking. I'm gonna remove these just because I do not want them to slide into my pearls. I'll let this sit overnight. And then I will go in and add my journaling and ink around the edges of that with the toffee as well. I think the layout has turned out really beautiful and it highlights such a special moment and something that is very rare for my family. So um, I hope you guys like this. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you back here for another scrapbooking video real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.